So I remember a few months ago, a friend of mine was getting married and we were in a WhatsApp group together. And so everyone was saying, you know, Mazel Tov, that's great, congratulations. And uh, I didn't add my Mazel Tov or congratulations because I felt like it's stupid, you know, 30 people in this chat have already said Mazel Tov. Why would I need to add my Mazel Tov? And I think this was, this is like part of the, the narcissist right, approach to life that you see everyone else celebrating and you think, ah, oh, you know, I'm just so much smarter than that. I don't need to fall in with the sheep. And so too, I'm you know, walking along the LA Marathon here on Wilshire Boulevard. And uh, many of the runners have family and friends who are showing up to support them on their run. And so like the narcissist in me think, oh, that's stupid. You know, I see through that. You should just be self-directed. But obviously everything goes better if you do it with other people. Like if you do the LA Marathon with friends, right, it's a lot easier to train. It's a lot easier to push through the pain and to you know, undergo this tremendously challenging ritual. I remember I once uh, uh, went, to a, went to a race and uh, I was about 11 years old and so I started I, I, I see everyone else cheering, oh you're doing great, you know keep going, way to go and I thought oh I'm smarter than this so I just started saying you're hitting the wall you're going to drop out look like you're in a lot of pain and I think this is going to work out well for you I, I just wanted to be contrarian but I uh, had a friend who was racing that day and he says people need encouragement they don't need need to be told that they look like they're dying that they look like they're hitting the wall so as a narcissist I just felt like I had to be different I had to be contrarian I just wasn't going to be one of the sheep just going along with the crowd but generally speaking we are evolved to be social animals generally speaking you should go along with the sheep you should go along with the crowd if you see a bunch of people running one way in uh, fear anxiety and panic you should probably not start to inquire you know, why what's the basis you know, do they have good epistemics and generally speaking you'd be better off just following them like, you're better off being one of the sheep you're better off following along with the crowd in most things so uh, kids often say to my parents the parents will say to their kids why'd you do that and the kid will say well everyone else was doing it and the parent will say well if everyone was jumping off a cliff you know would you do it too but it's a good heuristic if everyone else is doing it it's a uh, it's a pretty good uh, heuristic for determining to whether or not you want to make a particular decision. So heuristic means an imperfect shortcut for making a decision. Right? So heuristics aren't perfect, they're imperfect, they're flawed, but we don't usually have the luxury in life of taking sufficient time and effort to make the perfect decision. So generally speaking, you want to evolve some pretty good heuristics and just going along with the crowd but being one of the sheep is a pretty good heuristic and so my narcissistic self will often think you know oh, I'm so much smarter than the sheep I'm, I'm going to take the contrarian position I'm not just going to fall in line with what the mainstream media says or the experts say or the, the academics say right? I'm going to think for myself I'm going to dare to say the unpopular thing but uh, that's not a good tactic for getting through life in a happy, effective way, right? You want to tailor what you say and do to your audience. Like most of us care most of all about our in-group, right? So I was listening to Yale psychologist Paul Bloom talking to the Decoding the Gurus two other academic psychologists, Matt Brown in Australia and Chris Cavanaugh in Japan, 
and, and they admitted they, you know, they don't care really what people on the right say. They don't care what MAGA supporters say. They don't care what outsiders say. They really only care about what their academic peers say, what their in-group says, and we're pretty much all like that. And that is the efficient, effective, adaptive way to go through life, is to align what you're saying and doing with how your in-group is going to react to it. And then concentric circles out from your in-group, right? You still want to be able to walk down the street in peace. You want to be able to get on a bus in peace. You want to come and go in peace. You want to lie down in peace. You want to walk by the road in peace. You want to go to a restaurant in peace, right? So modifying what you're saying and doing according to how it's going to be received by other people. That is the adaptive strategy. And you can caricature that to being like sheep. But uh, the people who are like sheep, right, they're happier and they're more effective. And they probably, generally speaking, make more money. They probably have more kids. They probably uh, pass on, more likely to pass on their genes, right, because women in particular, they, generally speaking, don't want to you know, marry, get married to a guy who is alienated from wider society and who other people strongly dislike because it makes you vulnerable. So is that person going to do the whole marathon bouncing a basketball? So I was in uh, therapy. Uh, and talking about an engagement party I'd just gone to. And how at the engagement party I saw this one woman like spot a female friend and then they, they ran towards each other and squealed with joy and gave each other a big hug. And I was making fun of it to my therapist. But he said, well, don't you wish that you could have seen someone there who was, uh, who would squeal with joy when he, when he or she, she saw you and uh, jumped into your arms, like celebrated seeing you, celebrating that connection. And I realized he was right. So I often do these solitary activities. That's kind of my nature is to go the solitary way. It's kind of how I was raised. I'm not one of the sheep 40. All right, you're you're one of those who's going to keep the sheep safe because you're, you're an independent thinker, you see through the BS. But uh, generally speaking, it's not a good way to go through life. Now, I have the, the inner resources to enjoy solitude and I enjoy doing things that I'm good at, such as you know, cognitive intellectual pursuits, which are usually best pursued alone, such as reading a book. But uh, my, my natural tendency towards solitude and individual activity is not generally the most effective, right? It's much more effective to do things part of a group, part of a community. Right? We're kind of evolved and built to spend eight, ten hours a day around other people. And particularly I notice around under owners, so many of them particularly stuck in solitude. And with the work from home phenomenon over the past few years, I notice a lot of people have just found it easy to work from home, to stay in their sweats all day. But it's also become tremendously isolating, they frequently gain you know, a lot of pounds. They have not just let their, their body go, but they've, their social skills have atrophied during the lockdown and the work from home. Damn, I'm trying to do a high quality podcast here. And I keep uh, blaring this music and causing me copyright problems. Why can't they allow me to do my high class, high quality production, man? We don't need this blaring music. We don't need this rock and roll, guys. So. I did a lot of running when I was 11 and 95% uh, of it I did on my own. But that 5% that I did with other people, that was a lot more fun. 
and it gave me a lot more energy. And most of my best memories are with other people. So it was really good to go into therapy and have many of my default assumptions challenged. So when it comes to recovery from narcissism, I'm not sure how much benefit I got from the therapy, but uh, it may have been considerable. I, I want to attribute 90% of my recovery from uh, narcissism to 12-step programs, but uh, bouncing things off someone else, getting different perspectives and having having a therapist open my my mind to my prejudices and my self-congratulatory framing of life. Maybe that was a lot more helpful and effective. But there is a conventional wisdom that there is no cure for narcissism. And that may be right. <laughs> 